thanks for coming. Even in summer we get some people coming in, which is good. So I think our concept is well, has been well received. And we think that after the summertime, a lot of people moved and, and joined the cold weather in the north. Come down, we will have a real nice start in the, in the uh, fall. So uh, we welcome Chris and his team. Uh, from Paragon Flight, but Chris is special because he's not only running the Paragon Flight, but his father and his family is also an investor in the Rocket Lounge. And his father, Kevin, he is not only a German name, surely, <laughs> is also our board member and very good mentor. So we are really happy not to have only Chris and Kevin and his mother, who owns a lot of uh, real estate here, have family in the family. Yeah. So I'm real happy that you're here, Chris, and that we did something together here. Yeah. And we have a corporate plane now for several. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Uh, so what we want to, uh, again, we do a lot of uh, events in the summer and try out what's running, what's not running. So when you go to Meetup, I think next week we have two events, lunch and learn and an evening event. So even if you think it's too much every week, so we try it out. So we, we use the summer to find out what's happening. So we have a group of, you know, Sven started this uh, tech meet. So it's, he has already now 100 members. It's amazing. So we have a girl who's doing a WordPress, whatever. Maybe 10 people coming, we don't care. So they have a home now and whatever, looking for different stuff. Uh, Rocket Lounge is a home and, and uh, everybody can come and sign in with Meetup and we are happy that, that you are coming. We get more and more sponsors, so that in the future the food, pizza and maybe other foods are talking to all the restaurants in downtown, the Fort Garage. So next time maybe we get wings and carbos and other things. They, they found out that, oh, there's a new facility here who brings <laughs> attractive people to downtown, you know. And you see downtown is more or less empty, the tourists are not here, but we are still here. So they help us now, it's sponsor. I had the nation, uh, region bank today here to manage us, they want to sponsor us. So it's good for us. I mean, we like to sponsor the drinks, but even better if they sponsor it. <laughs> uh, we will start in September our first incubator and accelerator program, which is involved with money. So people who, which will be selected to run it will get incentives and money. So we, we will have sponsors to pay for them. It's young companies, but also advanced companies from overseas which can get between twenty-five and fifty thousand dollars, and they can stay here for six months, six weeks intensive accelerator program where we bring them everything what they need, bring their products to market, and then after this we have a demo day, what they do in all the big tech hubs in front of investors. So we found out, as we all know, there are not enough investors here. We have to build them. So we decided that we will start to own funds. So the, we will announce in, a, in four weeks from now the first angel fund, which will be uh, about $5 million, which will be uh, stuffed and filled from local people, which we are raising. So we found a very uh, interesting partner. He will be in the jury of our next uh, pitch event, which is on July 28, Jason Schwartz. Jason moved to uh, Fort Myers from New York City. He works 20 years at Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. He started the venture capital arm, very successful uh, guy to raise money, and he joined us as a partner. He will run our fund. We will raise another fund, which is a bigger one, 25 million only for healthcare, because we found a couple of family offices who want to invest in healthcare. And they are from Germany, but they have homes here in Southwest Florida, so they like the idea of what we are doing and attracting healthcare companies and they want to help us to invest. So we will start, you will see it very uh, soon in the news that we will have our own funding possibilities. And then we co-invest with other angel groups who are already here, which is very important for us. Also what Peter has developed with a couple of uh, people and companies, we will start maybe not this year but early next year what we call industrial specific accelerator programs. So we're working with sponsors. The first one will be agriculture. We're talking to U.S. Sugar and others to attract agriculture businesses. We have one here, AG Tech already. And then we help them 
to raise money and bring their technology to market together with big corporate sponsors. So we will do agriculture, healthcare, financial technology, fintech. We talk already to some big sponsors from the banking side. And the other one was uh, uh, sustainable energy. So we will work with the Kitson Group and the Babcock Ranch project and build also a rocket lounge in their campus. When they starting to build, there will be 50,000 people living. It's totally solar powered, totally sustainable, and will be one of the modern cities which will build in the state, in the nation. And Kitson and his group, they are here and using our meeting groups, and they like what we are doing, and they want to partner with us. And as we are coming from Europe, we are using solar for so many years now. Germany is already, I think, 40 percent independent from oil and everything. It's only solar, wind. So we we will bring more and more here to Florida and get a lot of support. And what else? I think that's all. Now, welcome Chris. It's your turn. Right. And we are real excited that you will tell us something about this famous drone business. Everybody talks about drone, but nobody knows what you can do with all this sure. amazing stuff. All right. Thank well, you. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for having us. This is a little bit out of our comfort zone. We're usually in our little flight school and people come to our environment and you know so it's kind of nice to go to someone else's environment so we really appreciate you guys having us so uh, my name is Chris Shonsi and this is Jeff Wolf we're co-owners of Paragon Flight Training um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Paragon who we are how we started um, how my dad ties into that and then we're also going to talk about obviously drones and then we're going to go outside if, if the weather's permitting and demo and if uh, you know, one of you guys want to work the camera or something when Jeff flies it, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. So Yeah, nice. Yeah, we have free koozies over there, um, cards, everything else like that, so help yourself. How many of you guys have flown a plane before, flown in a small plane, like a Cessna? Are you a pilot? Pilots? Just, no, I wasn't a pilot, but it was. Alright, that's I awesome. Cool. So there's four, four guys, four people? That's, that's the Microsoft one. Flight Simulator. Oh, that can, yeah. Together yeah. with Bill Gates in 1985, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's he didn't get it up the ground. It was only San Francisco Airport. Do you remember? It was the first word. No. It was not gonna, long. <laughs> no, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't yet. I think it was a little later. I had a, a penny and twos when I came into the computer world. So <laughs> that, that was a good one. So, yeah. I tell you what Intel I did. Inside. So, um, so, yeah. So a little bit about Paragon. Uh, we're based here in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, we have two locations. Uh, one is a ground training operation where we do simulator training, and one is a flight operation. Um, we were started, we were founded in 2006 by Kevin Chancey, it's my father. And uh, just like you guys, he was, uh, he's got the entrepreneurial spirit. And he saw an opportunity in the industry and uh, it's kind of funny because most people would look at the industry and think, you know, to stay away from it. But he, he saw an opportunity because it was a declining industry. Uh, pilot production has been declining since the 1980s. Um, it's lowest it's ever been the amount of pilots coming out every year. Uh, the technology was low or poor. The technology hadn't been in, improved in 20, 30 years. Um, and the customer service in the industry was absolutely horrid. Um, they become complacent, and you had to kind of uh, you had to prove yourself as a customer to them as a as a vendor, you know, as a, as a yeah. business. So it's kind of funny. So my dad saw those opportunities, and he founded Paragon Flight as a high technology company, uh, great customer service, and we decided to do things differently. So uh, just like you guys are doing things differently here, we totally did things differently in the flight training, and it's become very very successful for us. So. A little bit about Paragon. Um, I'll let Jeff talk a little bit about Paragon Charter. That's our secondary business now. Yeah, so we um, kind of the natural progression for us was to start from flight school and then we applied for our charter certificate. Um, it, with the FAA, it took about four years for us to, to kind of get that going. So, um, one of the unique opportunities for us as a business is that. You know, if you were to start a business and not get any funds for four years, it'd be very, very difficult to do. So um, we had a unique opportunity to have the flight school kind of support us while we were going through this, the certification process. And uh, we also just used the exact same planes that we were using. So it wasn't uh, any additional 
uh, equipment that we needed, but now it's uh, something that even right now we still don't really advertise much, but uh, it's starting to become a much bigger part of our business, and I think this year is really the year that we're going to start pushing it a lot more. Um, currently we have um, two aircraft on the charter fleet, but we're in the process of adding two more. So we have a Cessna 400, which is basically a four-seat aircraft, but it's the uh, fastest single-engine aircraft that uh, they make in production, um, which if you compare us to any other charter company, it's like about half the cost of any other aircraft to fly. So um, when we get quotes to go to even Jacksonville or think of the really pla you know, the places that really suck to drive to, that's that's pretty much where we fly to. So we go to uh, Key, Key West, West all the time, we go to Tallahassee all the time, we go to Jacksonville all the time. I mean, so if you think about the really hard places, that's where we end up going. Um, I mean, Key West is under an hour for us to fly to. So. It's pretty significant. So we have guys that have business meetings down there, fly down there, do their meeting at lunch, come back same day. It's a U.S. trip same day. So uh, and they can do that for you know under a thousand bucks. So whereas any other charter company is going to be two, three, four thousand dollars, same same exact mission. So it gives us a huge niche. Um, we're also adding a much larger aircraft, which is a Plaza PC12. Um, we'll would be capable to hold up to um, nine passengers. So it's a kind of a significant jump. I mean, the, the mission we've always been missing has been the family of five and all their baggage. So now we have that kind of uh, mission capability. So Yeah, we um, did NASA in an hour, right? Yeah, I went to NASA and picked up all his family in an hour. So it's, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. You know, it, it's uh, Cincinnati's three hours, you know, so it's, it really is a, a much faster aircraft. It's 100 rounds faster than our other aircraft. So it's significant. I mean, it really makes uh, everything very painful and close, you know, but uh, um, and even then, when you break it down on a per seat basis, it's it's still about the same price as our other smaller aircraft. So it's uh, it's pretty nice. Which isn't that much more than commercial. I mean, obviously, when you break it down over eight guys to go to the Bahamas, you're yep. looking at two, three hundred bucks a person. So and you're really buying convenience. You know, it's uh, on demand on your time. You know, so whenever you want to leave, we're ready to leave. You know, it's 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 not like you have to schedule you know around the airline schedule and maybe they only fly to that city once on Tuesday and once on Thursday, and you gotta hang out in the hotel until they're ready to go. And, and we go into every single airport, not just the major you know, service ones. So I can routinely get them within a five minute drive of where they need to be. So it's, it's really convenient. Keep that in mind, you guys own like million dollar businesses. Yeah, we gotta blow up the hair <laughs> 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 in, in Especially when we get our international yeah. people coming over yeah. and yeah. show them the area. So yeah. how much is a flight license? To, to get a pilot's license yeah. is, is about ten. It's ten to thirteen thousand dollars. Right. Compared now. to Europe, you cannot believe it how cheap that is. Easily double. Yeah. 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 Europe fuel easily is three times the cost here. So what we want to do together is you to attract the companies who come here and start here. A lot of this owners are already maybe pilots, but can't afford it. It's too expensive in, in Europe compared to Germany. So they say you can work here. You can make your pilot license here, and if your plane, which is affordable. For a company who have already made money, that's attractive. I mean, you should come off in New York or other places. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, being in Fort Myers, the cost here is so much, you know, so much lower than the, the big cities, Miami or San Francisco or New York or even Michigan, you know, Detroit. So we're really uh, at an advantage here for flight training. Uh, and, and on top of that, if you guys, uh, if any of you guys are interested in doing a discovery flight, which is a, about an hour to a half an hour in a plane uh, where you're actually flying it, uh, come see me. I'll give you my card and my signature on it, and it will comp that price for you for being rocket launch. Yeah. So, so it's a lot of fun. It's a great thing to do if you've never flown a plane or just to kind of introduce yourselves to us. So, um, a little bit about Paragon, a little bit more. Um, we've done over 65,000 hours of instruction since 2006. Uh, we average, uh, in the last two years, we've averaged over 45,000 gallons of fuel usage. Uh, we are the number one consumer of dead dinosaurs in Fort Myers, I think. So, uh, last year we did over 20,000 takeoff and landings, and uh, we've been industry recognized as the premier, one of the premier flight schools in the country. And in 2014, we actually were recognized as the number one flight school in the country, out of 1,600 schools. Wow. Um, yeah, that were submitted by your clients. So you know, you guys being business owners, there's no better feedback than your client. Um, so. I got a little video here I want to show you. Um, we have two or three videos here we're going to show you because sometimes in our industry it's better to show things than to talk about it. Uh, so we're going to show you a little video um, here about us and this will tell you a little bit more about her. Oh no. 
Oh, so we're not even drive to Key West, eh? What's that? We we'll drive to Key West. Well, we'll skip the video because the one I'm not. I went by boat. Oh, you can have your, you know, the passwords. You know, the wi password. The password, yeah, sure. Yeah, in a second. No, you know, I hooked into the HDMI. Sorry about that, guys. It's right there. This one? All right, so I'll show you a little video here, and uh, we'll go on to the next, uh, next little section of the bus. Does anybody that has a desire to fly? You guys hear that okay? Someone where our customers are going to enjoy being around, um, that our customers are going to enjoy flying with. Yeah, over there too. What really sets us apart on the customer side is our people. Um, we spend a lot of time recruiting from great universities and great people. Um, our interview process is actually three phone calls, and then we fly the person in for a 24-hour. Um, we call it vote in and on the island. So uh, you have to have uh, buy-in from everyone on the team before you before you come on the Peregrine team. So we spend a tremendous amount of money and time uh, recruiting the best instructors that we can. You know, our, our ideal instructor is someone that uh, is, wants to work full time, uh, wants to come in here and uh, um, take as many students and fly as much as utterly possible, but at the same time ensuring that the customer experience is good, that they're, uh, they're following our, uh, our uh, drinking our Kool-Aid and doing exactly what we want them to, how we want them to teach. And, using our syllabus at the same time. Thank you for calling Darren on flight. This is Brent. Uh, we always joke around that I'm the director of first impressions, so I'm the first person you see when you come in. Oh, okay. Well, cool. Uh, what I would recommend to you is our introductory flight lesson. It's our discovery flight. It's offered at a special rate of $99. It takes you a like half an hour of ground instruction. Well, the first thing we do is we give everyone a tour. Kind of show them around, show them our uh, um, training aids, uh, our facilities, classrooms, um, show them the aircraft, show them the hangar, um, just give them that welcoming tour, kind of, you know, invite them in. Um, the second thing we would do is sit down and go over uh, the, the syllabus, the ground school, kind of the, the course layout, how we would accomplish their individual goal. And then the third thing we would do is uh, suggest a discovery play. students to give us feedback. Uh, we do lots of surveys, we do these community events, uh, our, our hangar events and our fly outs, so we're constantly trying to get the customer to give us feedback on what they like, what they don't. We do uh, quarterly events, which are, uh, you know, usually involve flying somewhere, um, and then we have one event every year where it's in our hangar, kind of a, more of a customer appreciation, it's a much bigger event. Um, but our, uh, our quarterly events involve, you know, going to the Bahamas, so we, we go over all the, uh, the procedures and the processes and the customs paperwork of going to the Bahamas. We take every plane we have, we fly over there for a long weekend, stay at a resort, and come back. So the students mm -hmm. love that one. You know, internally, behind the scenes, we have the ability of tracking every one of our students. And, and if they fly and don't create another reservation, then, then we get alerted and the instructor gets alerted to kind of call and follow up with that student. The goal was to ensure that no one kind of falls off the grid because if someone, uh, 
doesn't make a reservation and then they go home and they'll say, oh, I'll schedule tomorrow or next week. And, and then, but life gets too busy and they just don't. And then now it's been a month since they've flown. Um, the chances of them actually continuing are very slim. People's dreams, you know, and I think it's our duty to make sure the client is afforded that opportunity. Local business owner there. Yeah, it's my shower door. It's just the best way to school, you know? There's no secret sauce, you know, like people ask us, what's the secret sauce, or what do you guys do differently? Honestly, just enjoy what you do and instill that energy on your students. They'll know it. The minute you come in the door, they know if you want to be there or you don't. And, uh, and people want to be around happy people. People want to be around people that have the same interests as them. So uh, that's all I have to say about Paragon. That's what we do. Please join AOPA in congratulating Paragon Flight School of Fort Myers, Florida, voted Best Flight School of 2014. Alright. So that kind of sums us up in a nutshell. But you never had a flight school in Detroit, only here, huh? Yeah, no, flying Detroit's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, uh, the flight schools are just so bad um, that, uh, oh, that. You know, it was perfect, perfect opportunity here to, yeah. to really take advantage of that. So uh, we have some partnerships. Uh, some of these low, these companies you might know, uh, some of you won't. Um, we partner with the local high school, ECS, which is Evangelical Christian School. Uh, so we start students uh, in ninth grade in a flight program. And uh, once they complete the four years, they, um, they have a pilot's license. So then they can go on to a school like Liberty University, uh, which we do a four-year degree. So they, we can have eight years of that client here and never leave Fort Myers, and we take them from a, a freshman in high school to having their BS wow. in aeronautics. Yeah, so those are things that we've done differently as a place where we develop pipelines like that. We work with the U.S. Air Force. Um, we do uh, work with FGCU. We sponsor their flight code. So we try to be involved in the community a lot. Um, so you guys probably want to hear more about drones instead of us, but I just figured you a little background because drones are the next evolution of flight training. So when we started, we started doing pilot training, and then we started doing flight charter, and now we're starting to do drone work. Um, and just like everyone else in the industry, uh, we're like, well, it's exciting, we want to do it, uh, what do we do, you know, or what the hell is it, you know, it's kind of where we've been. So uh, we're learning more and more um, as we go, um, so I'll share what we know, and I'll share a little bit of history about it, and then kind of where we think drones are going. So when people think of drones, you kind of think of these, these photos you're seeing here, you know, the, the Global Hawk there, which is probably the largest, uh, you know, it's drone, you know, unmanned aerial vehicle uh, in the world. And then they go all the way down to these ones that are the size of a quarter. We fly those around the flight school, you know, just for fun. So um, there's even helicopter drones, there's land drones, there's sea drones. Uh, there's all kinds of different unmanned uh, autonomous vehicles. Um, even uh, in some of them been around a really long time, but typically what what you what people are thinking about now is this one in the middle, and that's a commercial drone like this DJI Inspire One. Uh, that's when all the craze really started when it became commercially available. Um, so, and the commercial market is just insane. I mean, yeah. just just insane how fast it's uh, growing. And like I said, no, everyone's buying one, but no one's really figuring out how to make money. Those guys are making money because they're selling. You know, millions of units a year, but everyone else is still trying to figure their way through it. It's like the wild, wild west right now. So, so there's still two markets: a private market, and then the military market. Yes. So with the predators and the Lockheed to build yep. this big. And that's office. really the big money's on that end with those large companies like Lockheed and North yeah. and Bremen, and you know, they're, they're just you know they're producing just huge. That's the size of one of our training aircraft. It's bigger, actually, high flight flights, but. Those have like a 50 or 60 foot wingspan. Um, they're just huge. So, um, and they're not autonomous. None of these vehicles are autonomous. Don't don't mistake 
these for being autonomous. Um, they are manned by people. So it's not like the robocops out there or you know, whatever's going on right now. Eventually, I'm sure to go there, but they're not. So a little history about drones. Uh, I was digging for some history for you guys, and I found a couple fun things. Uh, actually, um, drones, uh, another way to say drone is unmanned aerial vehicle, or some people call them uh, unmanned aerial systems, UAS or UAV. Uh, so the first UAV, unmanned aerial vehicle, was actually used in 1849 when the Austrians attacked an Italian villa, uh, village, uh, the city of Venice. And what they did is they put a bunch of explosives in a balloon and flew it over there and <laughs> dropped it on them. So it was an unmanned aerial vehicle. Austria intended for Egypt. The Italian team was a present from Austria. You know? So I thought that was kind of fun. So that's really the first recorded use of an unmanned which is kind of funny because everyone thinks of them being like in the last five years. I'm so happy that you don't mention Germans. It's yeah. an Austrian lieutenant. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so there was one war we didn't start. Yeah. <laughs> so I like it. Uh, and then in 1946, the U.S. Uh, converted B-17s over to uh, unmanned vehicles, and they used that for data collection and nuclear tests. So they'd fly them through there, which I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, the modern military use was really adapted in the 1960s. Uh, the CIA really got involved in surveillance. Um, so that, that's really when it came about. What you see now is modern. It really started in the 60s and it's progressed since then. Um, and then a, a kind of a cool thing I didn't know is that the Predators, very similar to the aircraft you saw in the picture before, were used in 2006 uh, for search and rescue for Hurricane Katrina. So they used the infrared cameras to help find people. Those cameras are affected up to 10,000 feet at that time. Uh, so they could see somebody in the rubble. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I told you that I started my first technology company in this building in 2003, 4, oh, mm -hmm. and we have developed video stabilization. And our first customer was Predator, it was in 2004, because when you zoom in from this height, you can't say it was analog cameras, mm -hmm. and the first clear cameras in infrared, and we stabilized it mm -hmm. with the software and, and hardware chip. So that they can see something was interesting. Was and this thing, before this. and this thing, I mean, wait till you see this thing. Uh, it's and it's just, all now inside. I mean, yeah, it's like a It's just two thousand five hundred dollar per stabilization box. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's really cool to see the history of it. Um, so really, what's really driving uh, what you're seeing now is is high levels of technology being put into commercially available units. So everyone, uh, you know, RC, this is basically an RC, a radio controlled vehicle. And what they've done is they've added high technology components like GPS, uh, they closed loop GPS, so it's able to uh, hold itself steady um, in wind and things like that and, and hover. Uh, they put vision uh, position systems on it, it has cameras on the bottom. Uh, they put 4K cameras on it, you can live stream, which we'll show you guys a little bit later, hopefully. Um, so what they've done is they've made it, they made it very easy and very safe to use. So you don't have to be this guy on the left. You know, this guy's probably got hundreds of hours of training, joysticks, monitors, he's in some kind of bat cave somewhere doing something, you know. Now you can be, you got an iPad, you hook it on one of these controllers and you're flying the thing in five minutes. My brother can fly it, you know, I mean. So and it was in a couple of years. Yeah. When it's all happened. It's amazing. Uh, the progression is, is not linear, it's exponential. I mean, it's, just, it's just flowing through the roof. And where that really comes from isn't on the hardware side. The hardware side really isn't evolving. They're just taking GPS receivers that have been in cell phones for 20 years, or 10 years, whatever. Um, the battery technology really hasn't changed. What's really changing all that is the software. Sure. The software is amazing. Um, the fact that, and that's what's exciting for you guys, who are, you know, any of you guys are software, pretty much all of you guys are software, software guys. Um, is that the software is what enables users to use it. Um, it's, it's dummied down, you plug in your iPad, um, it's amazing the way you can do it, a push of a button. It, it's doing everything closed loop, it's doing it all in the background. It's this seamless, beautiful platform. Um, it's, it reminds me of Apple, how they, you know, the, the design of it is just so smooth and beautiful that people are attracted to it. And that's what's bringing people to the drone market. It's easy to use. Um, no one likes RC planes, or they're all over the place, you know, it's, it's no fun, that is fun. So, application. So, uh, you know, you, what do you guys think of as applications for drones? I mean, what comes to mind? The number one thing that comes to mind is probably video. All right, everyone videotapes something on a drone. Some guy on a snowboarder or a skateboard or he's got a, you know, a Hero One or, you know, camera on or whatever it happens to be. 
But there's so many different applications, you know. Um, the Mars rover is, you know, an autonomous vehicle. Uh, it's, you have camera applications, you have consumer racing, um, you have space exploration, sea exploration, agriculture, uh, 3D mapping, military. So there's like, there's hundreds of different applications for drones. Um, and I'll show you one of my favorite here, one more video. I love this video because it's kind of cool. Uh, any of you guys Miami Dolphins fans? All right, cool, you recognize this thing. <laughs> So they started a drone racing league, and the guys wear you know, Oculus Rift. I don't know, have you guys seen this video? That's your hobby. They do their own race inside the stadium. Those little home builds, are they? They're about this big. And uh, they're custom built. Yeah, it's like this league builds these uh, drag cool. racing drones. I'm surprised the signal stays. Uh, this is intense. Yeah, <laughs> that's the crazy turn to me. Oh. And then when he comes around this left turn here, right here, it's like uh, I mean you're you're only ten feet there, doing 40, 50 miles an hour. You know? So this is just a new application, and the guys actually wear the headsets. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So, cool. do something like that over here. How fast are you going around that stadium? Just, uh, I just need to put fans in the stands there. So I thought that was uh, pretty wild to see. Um, let me make it stop. So, so the applications are just endless. You know, a lot of people don't think about agriculture, but what they do is they put different sensor pods in these, and you can see the different areas. Um, of, the, of the crops that are getting more water or less water, so you can make sure the irrigation is efficient, so you have a more even crop and a better um, distribution of water. So it's, it's you know, just every, there's so many different applications. We have one company, in the AG Tech, sitting here doing exactly this. So um, to me, it's really exciting. Um, you know, really from there, um, we don't. We don't really know too much more. We're, we're just like everyone else. Even though we, we do it for a living, uh, the regulations keep changing. Anytime they change, I was just talking to Dieter, you know, with Brexit, regulations are changing. When regulations change, business owners clam up. Everyone clams up. Um, so that's what's happening in the drone, in drone industry. You know, the FAA hasn't come out with uh, regulations for sure. They've changed the regulations twice or two to three times in the last two years or last year. So uh, as far as market development, it's a lot slower than it could be. So we're hoping the latest revision um, is going to be final um, and we'll be able to uh, make sure everyone's flying safe and knows the regulations uh, and the market can grow and expand. But it's still much, much less uh, related like in Europe here in the US. Like oh yeah. They have some play. Yeah. You know, I mean, Really, a lot of regulations for safety because people don't know airspaces. What's interesting about this drone, it's smarter than even us right now. I mean, like, we just did a firmware update. You know, it showed us how to, they had videos online. I don't, know, like, I don't even know what firmware is, you know. So we just hook it up and uh, you put a chip in a card in there and it downloads and you update this and that and we're done in maybe 20 minutes. So since we've been here before, the firmware is uh, the software and firmware update, uh, they put a no fly zone over the, the jail here. Yes. Really? Yeah. Which when we were here before, we yeah, were down that street. It's a no flight zone. Yeah. So that's in the line. What does it mean? It stopped before it goes, or are you getting on the line? Yeah. Because I turned it on here and it said, uh, it said I'm approaching a no fly zone. The, the, it will stop and hover. You can't operate it, so, it, so it will not let you hover. Yeah. So that you don't can't fall down the night. <laughs> it just stops. You can't go down. I mean, the technology and the thing, it's like when the batteries get low, um, if, they, if, it, if it's beyond range, it, um, it will let you know. It calculates the distance, battery usage, what's going on at that time, exactly how long you need to get back. So if you lose, uh, if you're not listening to it, it will return to home. Um, it will hover if it loses signal. It will, 
I mean, it, it does, a, it's, it's amazing how many things that little box does, you know, and it's a ton of fun. Um, the other thing is, so we took a bunch of footage down here for, for Rocket, um, Rocket Lounge, and I was going to um, show you some of that footage. We actually took with this drone right down here, and we put together this really corny little video. Um, I, thought it was, I thought it was cool, but all the footage in this video was taken either downtown here or around Fort Myers. There is two shots that were in the Bahamas, but everything else is here. Um, with this drone, so, and I did it to Indian music, because I like Indian music, so, <laughs> but, this is all footage with this camera. You got it. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, you can see the quality of the video. My computer is, this is a brand new Mac. I mean, I just got this like last week and I can't even keep up with the, with the video. So, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so, it, the quality for off the shelf is amazing. The other thing with this is, uh, this has a detachable camera on it, uh, so the platform can be modified. You can attach a flare to it or different sensors. So uh, it's kind of interesting. Are they coming normally with GoPros or is that different? They, this is actually a camera that uh, DJI, uh, Key Pop Off, yeah. they, they, it's a 4K camera. It's their camera. It's beautiful off the shelf. <clears throat> but GoPro was the first one which you came Yeah, with. most of the first generations, they didn't have a camera, so you throw it, or if they did, it was really poor, you know, poor stabilization. Um, where that gimbal there is amazing. You fly at 40 miles an hour and it looks like you're sitting still, you know, or the wind's blowing you over the place and it's sitting still. So um, it, it's a pretty amazing uh, piece of hardware. So we talked a little bit about regulation issues, thousands of possible applications. Uh, the opportunities are endless. Um, but at the same time, you know, just with government regulation the way it is, it's really slowing it down. So we're hoping we'll get through that. The hardware is evolving very slowly. Um, you know, they'll use a little bit better materials that has carbon fiber in it, aluminum, uh, stainless steel, and re like high impact resins, like ABS plastics, things like that. Um, but really, where where this what's made it amazing and, and shown the explosive growth is the software. And the software is just unbelievable. And any of you guys want to come up, we'll show you some. Hopefully, we'll go outside, show you guys, show you the software in action, how it works. He flies it. I run the camera. Um, it's just. Yeah. Should we go downstairs? Yeah. 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 And then, uh, oh, what we want to do is real quick, um, I'm going to put an address up here. We can live stream it to any of your cell phones. Uh, we're going to try this YouTube thing we just found today. The drone's got a button and you put stream to YouTube, you click it, and it streams live. So um, we were just going to do that real quick. So if you guys want to see that uh, while we fly. Oh, and this is another cool thing DJI makes this. So this is for indoors. And uh, so what you're able to do is you take that camera, you attach it to here, and now you got a handheld gimbal. And you can drive, it has a little joystick here, you can drive it around, it's stabilization. Uh, these are like thousands of dollars if you buy them, and this is 500 bucks. It's amazing. It's pretty amazing. If you tell it to watch you, I can walk I can around here and stay around here. Are you the sales partner for this company here in the region? I'm sorry? Are you the sales partner here? We are. Uh, we, we do have the ability to sell them, but um, we're not, you're not going to get much more of a discount than you would if you went to Walmart because they buy 50 million units a year or whatever it is, and I buy, you know, 10. So, uh, but yeah, we do sell DJI. Uh, we did a lot of research in it. I went to a, a drone conference last year. We looked at every single uh, platform there was. There's a lot of ingenious platforms, um, but the DJI, it was just, it was just the best. And what's kind of funny is the, uh, I don't know anything about drones, you know, and we're just there. And I'm standing, there's this guy standing there, he's a short guy, he's got this, uh, you know, hat and a feather in it, and he's kind of dressed kind of, um, I don't know, like eccentric, you know. 
And uh, I'm standing there, I'm like, hi, can you help me? He's like, yeah, I guess. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I just want to know more about this, this drone. And I start talking to him. And, and uh, you know, he's kind of offended that like, I'm talking. I can't figure out why. And he was actually uh, like one of the largest distributors in the country. I guess if you're a drone guy, you know who he is. And I'm like, oh, who are you? Can you help me? So, you know? And so it's kind of funny meeting some of the guys that are a very small group of guys. They all know each other. A lot of the guys go back to RC planes and helicopters, oh. and um, now they're cool. You know, they're not nerds anymore. So. <laughs> but that's what we have about that. Let's see if we can live stream this real quick. So it's as easy as putting the camera on, putting the iPad on, and then um, <clears throat> any of you guys. I'll come over by you guys. You guys can see how wild this is. How this thing connects. So you just plug this thing in, and they have an app. This is one of the reasons why I bought it, because we just use our hardware. We use with Android or uh, Apple, doesn't matter. So they have an app, DJI Go. You select your um, your type of vehicle. So if you had different vehicles, you, you know, whatever they sell, you just, you know, you select your vehicle, and so that's ours. Go to camber mode. And then it pops up here, you're going to see a GPS. Um, this is where we'll see the camera when we get outside. If any of you guys want to work the camera while we're flying, you're welcome. It's kind of fun. Um, but it's that easy. I mean, I know how to fly planes. I don't know how to do you know, I don't want to be typing in DOS prop shit. You know what I mean? Um, but it's kind of cool. So you got the camera right there. So I'm controlling it. You can see, can you look right at Jeff if we want? So I can't really see anything in there. So it's got. 360 degrees. Uh, the other thing is about, see that landing gear, when it takes off, those, the landing gear actually is going to take off. It's all automatic. Um, so, let's do this, uh, let's figure this thing out here. Put this. So, let's click on the live stream. Rocket lounge. Called Rocket Lounge Demo. It's public, so any of you guys will be able to go there and we'll start it. This is just amazing to me. It's like, I can, it goes right through. So, it has some kind of encoder thing you have to start, whatever that is. Push that. Uh, what's the link? It's Kevin. Uh, it's generating. Just told me that the aircraft is approaching a restricted zone, prison, the aircraft will pause and hover. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's really close to the here. And there's no way to go into a different, like, toggle it into a different like, manual mode? You can, you can turn off GPS, and that's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's ways, I know you guys are like, your auto yeah, you can hack it. GPS is amazing. You can hack it, it just stops. Yes. You, you can know, do it. When it's off GPS, it starts to move on in, and you're like, oh. Sorry, it's kind of weird, but if you guys want to type it in, it's really cool to see. It's, it's about a 20 second delay, but it, it does actually, volume. you can hear what we're saying too, which is clear. <laughs> and it saves it to your YouTube, which we, had, we didn't know we had to delete it. So we were flying around inside the office, we're talking about eating lunch and swearing and stuff. <laughs> so, boom. All right, we're go outside. outside. Yeah, go outside. Could we use this here? What's that? What did you get here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can have it. Through a package for internationals here. Coming in, then the flight training, go fly, ba, 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 everything. Do you want to go to that little grassy area? Is that where you want to go? Yeah, yeah. Push the flight. Push the flight. Put a wonder in the It's an hour. 